I suppose since I always give this talk you know, at the beginning of every class that I start in terms of you know kind of success and you know how you build up mathematics I was gonna go ahead and you know break this up into small parts and make this available on a kind of a larger audience and one of the things I basically want to work with is whenever people take a new math course with me or, or take a mathematics course I want to kind of point out how mathematics builds up upon old mathematics and how it solves uh, greater amounts of problems and it's more of a philosophy of mathematics and how you grow in your mathematics courses and recognizing you know something that you did in the past can be used to solve something that you're doing in the future and this idea of as you grow in a math course you know as you start off as like a child and you start off in arithmetic and if you learn arithmetic and then move on into say algebra and then you move on to typically you're going to move on to trigonometry and then you move on to additional courses and as you're going through this idea of I'm going to learn arithmetic, I'm going to go on to algebra, I'm going to go on to trigonometry a lot of this kind of points out one of the things that we usually talk about on math is we say okay you're learning math but it really isn't math all alone it's actually maths, it's plural. There are many things that you're working with but in the end all of these mathematics that we work with all are made up of when we when we work with it it all is made up of what I like to call toys or really just simply the objects that you're interested in and then the rules of how you play the game and if we would go into say uh, arithmetic and you would have Oh, let's take an example from my life. One of the things I wanted, I like to do as I was teaching arithmetic, say, and working with my kids on it, you could play little games. And so one of the things you could do as you're, let's say you're driving down the road and you're, you're going down the road and you go over a bridge and you say, all right, hey, you had, say, five apples. And then as you come to a bridge, there's a troll that's underneath the bridge and he says, hey, if you're going to cross my bridge, you got to give me three apples. Then I ask, well, how many apples do you now have? And so my son would go, okay, five apples minus three. Well, I have two apples. And you extend the game and you say things like, okay, now you have two apples. You go up to the apple tree. You want more. You kick the apple tree. Down falls ten apples. And so, oh, all right, I had two, ten fall, and now I have twelve. And so you go through this little problem-solving thing of working with it. And in the end, mathematics in all of its different variations, all the different forms of math, those toys are meant to model things that we see around us. And so in the idea of arithmetic, uh, the toys of arithmetic are this idea of quantities. And so if we would have an arithmetic, we do things like, you know, one, two, three, let's say we just only do the counting numbers. And so we have one apple, I have two apples, I have three apples, and it, which made sense when I was working with my son. And, and when we're playing with different things, you know, you had the rules that went along. We would have the toys are just simply, you know, quantities of things. The rules were things like, well, add, you get more, you subtract, right? Which is this idea of like, okay, you had five, you take away three, how many do you have left? And so we go through these processes of working with these objects. And every now and then you hit an oddball roadblock. One of the questions that I asked was, okay, you have five apples, you get to the bridge, and, and the troll says, give me seven of your apples. And my son laughed at me and said, that was stupid. Because, well, you have five apples, you can't take away seven. That doesn't make sense. But on the other hand, if you're working problems out and you say things like well yeah I have five dollars I need to pay seven for this but if I have an agreement with say the shop owner say yeah I owe him seven dollars I have five I give him five I still owe him two dollars 
well, how would I represent that? And so all of a sudden, we have to extend our toys a little bit, and we have no longer the arithmetic of the county numbers. We start to move into the arithmetic of, let's say, you know, new toys. All of a sudden, we're no longer with just the county numbers. We start adding not only the number zero, which is an interesting object. It's an object that has lots of properties that we're going to work with in a lot of different classes. This idea of a thing that represents nothing, but it has a lot of properties. Then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, what can I do with those? Can I add? Can I subtract? We start to learn all these different rules, and so, but it's built upon the old things. And then when we move on to the ideas of algebra, algebra just really introduces the beginning of a question. So when I was going through the story problem with my son, and we would say things like, okay, you have five, take away three, how many do you have? Or you could shift it up and say, well, I wonder how many I had if when I took away three, I ended up with two. And so this idea of, I still have a number, right? I'm just not going to tell you what it is right now. Like five minus three is two. I can say what minus three would give me two, right? It's still a number. I'm just not going to tell you what it is. And so the idea here is, is I still have a new toy here. And it's kind of an interesting one. This idea of a variable. Say, and typically we use examples like, you know, x and y. Really, what is it? If we're still within arithmetic or real numbers, it's still a number. Except... I'm just not going to tell you what it is right now. Or maybe I want to find out what it is. Or we work with different properties. And so we keep building up things. We start saying that as mathematics builds, it has its toys and it has its rules. And over time, we ask, is what's multiplication? What's division? What's exponents? What are functions? Right? And we have toys that change over time. These objects th that themselves that we work with keep changing. And every now and then, we'll throw in an object that, well, I can't write what it is. It's one of these guys up here, or maybe many of those guys, but I don't know. So for now, I'll just put a symbol and let that hold the place of what it is supposed to be as we go through it. And it starts to answer questions. And some important things as you build, as you go from algebra, and then as you move into trigonometry, and then as you move into calculus, and you start repeating these events there are certain things that start to stick out a little bit that we always have to worry about. We have things like within these within this math that you're working with, with which is you know the toys that you have and the rules that you're working with, is there something that does nothing in a specific rule? And you know, kind of like a do nothing. So examples. 3 plus 0 is still 3. This idea of a do-nothing is an idea that we call an identity. It doesn't do anything at all. And there's lots of identities, but the identity is tied to a rule. So this isn't just, an, 0 is not just an identity. 0 is called the additive identity. It's the thing that you add and nothing happens. Uh, multiplication, 3 times 1 is 3. That's also an identity, but it's multiplicative. But this, as you have different toys and different rules, we're going to go back and check a lot of times. Hey, what does nothing? <laughs> For the toy that we have, if you move into, say, linear algebra, and you find out that your toy is a big giant block of numbers, well, what does nothing uh, under addition? What does nothing under multiplication? If it's functions in calculus, what does nothing under a particular operation that you're talking about? And sometimes we would like to have a process of a, can you undo something and when? You know, an example, it's kind of like the don't do that. You simply said, hey, I had a number and I added three to it. And I'm like, uh, don't do that. <laughs> Get rid of the three. Well, if I added three, I'd like to have, I don't, I don't want to do anything. And so the idea is, so let's say I have a number. I add three to it, and I say, well, I didn't want you to do that. And so what you'll do is say, well, okay, I'll undo it. I'll add the minus three, which ends up being a 
x plus zero, which is a do, a do nothing. So I've done I haven't done anything. I I've, I've gotten rid of it, and so minus three is three's additive inverse. So we have identities. That's the idea of a do nothing, and we have inverses, which is undo what you just did. You know. We do have problems. Sometimes that's not possible. We could say things like, I had a number and I multiplied by five. Divide by five. Don't do that. We have sometimes uh, you could say, I had a number and I multiplied by zero. Well, it's too late. You've destroyed your number because five times zero is zero. Ten times zero is zero. So sometimes you can't undo an operation. Sometimes you can. And so this idea of do nothings and undo things, this idea of identities and inverses are important. They show up all the times, especially when we're trying to model what we see in nature. See, mathematics is about, you know, things that are, I see them, I see five objects, right? We see things and we'd like to model it and do things and to allow us to do predictions, allow us to do different operations to see what happens over time. And so, we have to learn math. We're really asking, understand what you're working with. You know, what are the toys? What are the things that you have right now? And then what can you do with those things? What are the rules? What am I allowed to do? What does it mean to add? What does it mean to multiply? What does it mean to compose two functions? And as you go through these, if you're going to build up mathematics over time, you're going to have to focus on this. What do I have? And certain things always show back up. As you apply the rules, are there anything that's special? Is there things that don't actually do things? Are there things that allow me to undo what has happened? We have to learn what we are working with and what we can do. We have to keep those in, in mind. And as you grow in your understanding, this will allow you to build out your form of mathematics. And kind of there's a joke that kind of goes along with this that works rather well with it. And a lot of people when they talk about mathematicians, they talk about, you know, this idea or anybody that gets to a certain level or you're at a university is they're the uh, forgetful professor or they're they're kind of uh, not able to do very simple tasks. You have a guy that's like, man, he's smart, but he's really dumb. He can't do this really easy thing. And so there was a test that they did, and the test was, I want to figure out, say, the difference between an engineer and a mathematician. And the test was, all right, do they eventually fail when the test gets what most people would consider too easy? And so what they came up with was a test to say, let's make coffee. And they started off and they had their coffee pot and it's all sitting there with the grounds and filters and all good to go. And, and there's a sink, but it's just nothing's put together to make coffee. And they bring in an engineer and they make coffee. And he looks at them like they're idiots. And since engineers run on coffee, he just quickly grabs and just throws a handful of coffee grounds in a filter and puts it in there, puts as much water as he wants, and then goes ahead and makes the coffee, gets a big old cup of way too strong of coffee and then leaves. So he can make coffee. And they ask the mathematician to do it, and he comes in, and he looks at it. And he grabs a piece of paper, and he starts writing down, okay, he gets his list of things that he needs to do to be able to make his coffee, and he, he works it all out, and then he sits down, and he's like, okay, he puts in the filter, he measures the coffee grounds and puts them in, he puts the right amount of water in, and then he makes his coffee. And gets a nice coffee cup, and because mathematicians, we run on coffee too. And so he makes it. And so the next time they come in, they make the test easier. They already put the water in the coffee machine. And so the water is already in it. You just really just need to put in the grounds and turn it on. And so the engineer comes in. They say, okay, make coffee. He's like, okay. And he just puts in the coffee filter and grounds and makes himself a coffee. Coffee, gets his cup, leaves. And they come in and they have a the mathematician. And they say, make it easier. And they're like, okay, make some coffee. And he looks at the coffee, and there's already a coffee pot, and there's already water in there. And he looks at his list of instructions, and he looks back at the pot, looks at his instructions, and he grabs the entire thing, dumps all the water back out, sets it back down, and then says, problem has been reduced to previous problem, which has already been solved. And then he walks away. <laughs> which is really what we do in math, right? Anytime we give you something new, 
it's going to be built and you we have to work on it and figure out how is this built upon something that we already understand or know how do we leverage what is already known and we go back all the time to say hey look this is a new problem and the answer is no it's not what you imagine to be new is not so when we go through mathematics and we're talking about this idea of math is built up and out of this idea of toys and rules as we're going through this we're going to go through a lot of different classes and you got to figure out what am I what is the stuff I'm working with and what are the things that I have to do and what do I know and how does this build so it's one thing that I've always liked to leverage on my students as we go through classes and being able to move on to the next step